One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do in Motion is find out what your top performers are. So let's go ahead and create that together. What you're gonna to wanna to do is click on the top left-hand menu, click Create Report, and we're gonna build a top performing report. We'll dive into the other report style a little bit later on in this series. So go ahead and do that. We're gonna add a title, so top performing creatives. We're gonna to wanna to select a date range as well. Based this on your reporting cadence, maybe you have, as an agency, you report every week or every two weeks out to your clients, or maybe brand side, you're having a, a weekly or bi-weekly meeting with the team. Feel free to set that based on your reporting cadence there. You also can, though, manually select a specific date range if you wanna look at your top performers within maybe a specific holiday or promo season. So go ahead and choose your date range there. We're gonna do last 14 days for this one. Next, you're gonna to wanna to choose group by, which is how we are aggregating our ads together to show you performance. So what we do is essentially say anything with the exact same ad name. In this case, we are gonna to bundle together to show you performance that way. If you're seeing a lot of duplicate creatives down here, or you're working with a lot of dynamic creatives, it may be best to do group by creative, which will essentially bundle together based on the creative assets. So say you have one video that's a part of 10 different ads, we're actually gonna bundle all those 10 ads together to show you performance that way instead. So feel free to choose whatever works best for you. Typically one of these two options here. After you've choose your group by um, option, we're gonna go ahead and add filters. Filters are how we are essentially gonna tell the report which ads to pull in and which ones to hide out. So you can do anything within your naming conventions, as you can see, campaign ads that are ad name. Let's just say though, we only wanna look at ads that are within our prospecting funnel, because we don't wanna look at other funnel stages in this one. So I can throw on a filter for that. But let's also say too, I want to only look at specific products. Say I'm a company with a bunch of different product lines and I want to make sure I'm only looking at, let's see, ads that are within my lavender collection, let's just say. So I can throw on these filters to again, tell the, the, the report which ads we want to keep and which ads we want to hide out. Once you've gone ahead and done that, you actually can even do performance metric filters. These are one of the funnest things I think within a report to again, narrow things down a little bit further. But I could say if I want to look at my top performing creatives or ads that have been running, I want to make sure it's spent at least $100 in my case. Feel free to set this threshold to whatever you'd like. But we could say if it hasn't had at least $100, just hasn't had enough time yet, I don't wanna be comparing that side by side to creatives that are working. So spend above 100 in my case. And I also want to make sure I'm hitting a ROAS of at least two, let's say. So nice thing with performance metric filters is you can choose from any metric in motion. You can set a threshold is above or is below or is in between a certain number. And essentially, like I said, it's just going to allow you to filter out exactly what you're wanting to look at. So in our case, where we want to see our top performing ads, I know that anything above a row as of two for me is considered top performing. And I also want to make sure it's hit that spend, th spend threshold sorry, of above $100. That way I can truly see what my top performers are. The nice thing you can do within your reports as well is click on a thumbnail and it's actually going to preview the ad for you. So if you have a video, it's going to automatically play for you. Or if you have an image, that'll also just pop up for you as well. So nice thing to be able to quickly and easily preview which ads specifically are working. The second section of our report is the table section. This down here will list all the ads that match our filters. As you can see, there are eight selected here. These are the eight that are showing above in the table chart but all these down here are all the ads that match the above. As you can see, we have 104 ads in this case. So some things to mention here is you can change the table chart to show what metrics matter most to you. So this is completely customizable. To do that, you can click here and click customize columns, and you're gonna get this pop-up here, which is gonna show you some different options of metrics you can choose. So say I wanted to throw on a couple extra metrics, I can check those off. Down at the very, very bottom, you're gonna have all of your custom conversion metrics that you have as well, if there's any. And this left side here is the table chart. I can rearrange the order of the metrics that are gonna appear. I can also delete any ones out that I don't need and customize that based on your likings. Go ahead and save that as a brand new preset as well once you've gone ahead and chosen all of the different metrics that you want to show. And that way when you go into any new report, you can always auto apply it anytime. You can even set it as a default as well for future reports that you create. So once you've gone ahead and done that, go ahead and click apply and you're going to have your table chart that is edited. Next thing to note about the table chart is you actually have color or conditional highlighting that you can use. So click here and you have a few different options you can pick from. I'm just on this option here. As you can see, some colors are showing as red, some are showing as green, and some of them are white. 
It's essentially saying that based on the averages that are pulling into this table chart, so only the 104 ads in this case, which ones are above and which ones are below. So red doesn't necessarily mean bad, it's just below the average as an example. So in this case where I know I've set my threshold to ROAS above two, all these are considered a top performer. Looking at red for ROAS doesn't really make too much sense. So I might just choose it to be only green, just showing me which ones are exceeding my limits. So again, feel free to choose that based on whatever works best for you, but just conditional highlighting based on what's above and below average in the report. So there we go. We've gone ahead and created our top performing creatives report. It's going to really give us a quick and easy look at what's performing well within the account. Same thing can be applied for showing your bottom performers. Just go ahead and swap that row as instead of being above two to below two or whatever your specific conversion metric is. Maybe it's cost per app install. Maybe it's cost per lead registration, whatever it might be. You can fully customize that with our performance metric filters.